All right, so we're going to go ahead and do uh, transformations with a quadratic or parabola. As you can see right here, I have a parabola. It's the parent function. It's at the origin, um, which is 0, 0 right here. Uh, I'm going to be able to move this left and right, up and down. Uh, we do have our um, basic function, which is going to be our f of x equals a f of x minus c plus d. So we're going to look and see how each one of these affects the actual graph itself. So I'm going to do c first. c first um, is affecting the axis, so it's going to move along the axis here. It's moving horizontally. Um, so as I move it along the axis, you can see that it keeps its basic shape. So all the way over here at 3, it's actually still keeping its basic shape right up through here. Um, as I move it back over, you can still see that it's keeping its basic shape. So even like right here, you can still see it has its basic shape coming up as a parabola. Uh, it didn't get any narrower. It stayed the same width at all through everything. We still would have our axis of symmetry going straight up and down right through here. And of course, if you remember from last semester, there'll be a focus up in here somewhere and a directrix back down here somewhere. Um, so really what you have to remember about C, because of this minus right here, it's actually doing something opposite. So let's set our C back to zero. And let's look and see what D does. D, if you remember from last semester, should move it up and down, up and down the Y axis. So as I actually move my D, is I move it up. So I moved it up two units, so right here. It still kept its shape as a parabola. It didn't go any narrower. It didn't um, flip around or anything along those lines. Uh, so really our C and our D are translations. Now, of course, D, if it's positive, it moves up. If it is negative, it moves down. On our C, if it's negative, it actually moves in the positive direction because of this minus sign, because if you do a minus a negative. If it is a positive, we're actually moving towards the negative sign. Um, so this one's a little bit more counterintuitive. Now let me set everything back over to zero and let's look at A. A is actually going to be a dilation. Uh, it's going to affect the Y, so it's going to be a vertical stretch. So we can stretch it this way or um, a vertical compression, meaning we're shrinking it this, this way. If A is negative, we actually have a reflection over the X axis. So let's look at the, if A is negative first. So if A is negative, you can see that we still have our original parent function, but instead of it going up like this, it actually went down because it reflected over the x-axis. Now, let's put it back to 1. So there's my original parent function. Now, if I make A um, greater than 1, uh, it's actually going to stretch it, pulling it out like so. Um, I didn't set up my demo to actually show it when A is actually uh, between 0 and 1, but it will actually shrink it out and the graph itself would get wider. So if we actually want to look at, say, something that would look a little different if my A itself was less than 1. So we have our original graph here. Um, so we're going to go and we would make something right along this way. And it's going to make it much wider than the original. And this is if my A, if we do the absolute value of A, is less than 1, but it is greater than 0. Um, so it actually makes it wider. Um, whereas whenever my A is larger than 1, it makes it significantly, it, it stretches it this way, so it actually makes it skinnier. So let's work an example of how to actually graph one of these. Okay, so let's work an example now. Uh, we have our parent function f of x equals x squared. That's going to give us our basic points and our shape of the actual graph. My g of x here equals 2 times f of x plus 3 minus 4. So we're actually going to sketch a graph. We're not going to be real precise, not doing it on a grid or anything. We're just going to get a ballpark figure on this. So the first thing I need to know is some information about the parent function. I know that my parent function is going to be a parabola that starts at 0, 0. From here, I also know that there's going to be a table of points that I can actually use. And I want to do a minimum of five points. I'm actually going to pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 to keep my life simple. To actually find the y value, all I want to do is take this negative 2, plug it back into my x squared. So negative 2 squared becomes 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0, 1, and 4 because there's symmetry. 
Um, we're going to use these points to actually transform uh, f of x into g of x. And when we're done, we're going to basically be shifting this graph left, right, up, down, vertically, you know, stretch it or compress it. It really just depends upon the numbers in for my a, my b, and, or my a, my c, and my d. So we did this last semester. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate the actual written description. Uh, you guys can do the written description on your own. Uh, so let's do this. So if you remember from last semester, we need to set up what we call the vector mappings. Uh, we're going to do a point-to-point -point transformation. So we have to do this by hand because you know as you love it so much, you don't get a graphing calculator in my class, nor would a graphing calculator graph an equation like this anyway. So here we go. We're going to create a table. We're going to got my x and my y. In the middle here is going to be all of my parent function, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. All right. From here, we're going to extend out my table. And here is where we do our transformation. We're going to come up here and we're going to look. Everything on the inside affects the x's, but it's the opposite sign. It's counterintuitive. So since this is x plus 3, we're going to do x minus 3. Everything on the outside, outside of this f of x, affects my y's. We're not going to change any values. We're not going to flip anything around. So this is 2 times the y value. So we're going to do 2y minus 4. All we do is we plug in our numbers. Negative 2 minus 3 gives me negative 5 negative 4, negative 3. <coughs> Put my 1 in there, this gives me a negative 2. The 2 gives me a negative 1. I'm going to do the same thing. My y values, I'm going to plug into my y. So 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 4 gives me 4. 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 4 is negative 2. 0 gives me negative 4. And then we have symmetry, so we have negative 2 and we have 4. So now we have all these beautiful points. Now the question is, what do we do with these beautiful points? Well, really, we're just going to plot them and then sketch a graph that's going to look like our parent function. So here we go. So I have negative 5, negative 4. So negative 5 is over here somewhere, and then negative 5, 4, and 4 is up here. So let's call this negative 5, comma 4. Then we're going to do negative 4, negative 2. So if this is negative 5, negative 4 is going to be in the side and then down a little bit. So let's call this one negative 4, comma, 2. Next one is negative 3. Oh, graph that completely wrong. It's a negative 2. So negative 4, negative 2. Let's call this negative 4, negative 2. And then negative 3, negative 4, once again over and then back down. So we'll call this negative 3, comma, negative 4. And then, of course, there's going to be symmetry. So this point here is going to be our negative 2, negative 2. And then negative 1, 4. Horrible sketch here. Horrible sketch. Negative 1 and 4. Let me move this point over a little bit. And then from here, we just kind of draw a smooth curve through this. And it's not the prettiest, but there is roughly my graph of g of x. Um, from there, we did this.